Potential Difference in Parallel Circuits by kscience.com. Here is a parallel circuit consisting of a cell, two filament lamps, and two voltmeters connected in parallel across those filament lamps. In this parallel circuit, we're using a six volt cell. Six volts means six joules of energy is transferred to each coulomb of charge. So what happens is, conventional current goes from positive to negative. Current flows through the metal wire where they get to a junction. At this junction, the current splits. In this example, more of the electric current has split in the bottom branch and less of the electric current has split in the top branch. The current could have split 50-50, but in this example, I chose to make the current split disproportionately. So how does this affect the potential difference now the current is smaller? Well, the potential difference in the top voltmeter is 6 volts, the same as the cell. And the potential difference in the bottom voltmeter is also 6 volts, the same as the cell. So we can see in a parallel circuit, no matter what the current is, the potential difference across any branch always adds up to the same potential difference provided by the cell or battery. Current flows out of the filament lamps where they continue to flow through the metal wire until they get to the second junction. At this junction, the current meets and joins up again flowing back to the negative terminal of the cell. So the rule you need to know for potential difference in parallel circuits is It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Here is a parallel circuit containing a cell, one filament lamp in the first branch, another filament lamp in the second branch, and three filament lamps in the third branch. The potential difference of this cell is 9 volts. This means there is 9 joules of energy per coulomb of charge. Conventional current goes from positive to negative. Current flows through the metal wire. When the electric current arrives at the junction, this forces the current to split. So part of the electric current flows through this branch and the rest of the electric current continues to flow down this branch. This electric current continues to flow where it then meets another junction. This forces the electric current to split again. So part of the electric current flows down this branch and the rest of the electric current flows down this branch. We're now going to figure out, using the rule from before, what is the potential difference at each voltmeter? Well, first, let's remind ourselves about the rule of potential difference in parallel circuits. The rule is, the potential difference across each branch adds up to give the total potential difference supplied by the cell or battery. This means the potential difference across each branch needs to be the same as the potential difference supplied by the cell or battery. So in this case, as the cell supplies nine volts, this means the total potential difference of the cell equals nine volts. Let's now label these branches. This is branch one, this is branch two, and this is branch three. In branch one, there is only one filament lamp. So as the total potential difference of the cell is 9 volts, this means there is going to be 9 volts of potential difference across this filament lamp. So we write branch 1 equals 9 volts. And what about branch 2? Well, in branch 2, there is also one filament lamp. This means there will be 9 volts supplied to this filament lamp. So we write branch 2 equals 9 volts. In branch 3, there are three filament lamps. And because these three filament lamps are in series, this means the potential difference of 9 volts across this branch is going to be shared 
between these three filament lamps. Therefore, we write branch three. There is going to be nine volts. We divide this by three, as these are the three filament lamps. And this will equal three volts across each voltmeter. In total, adding up to nine volts across the whole branch. Press pause to answer the questions. Your answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.